Hey guys, I'm the Coaster Keat, and if you haven't been here, welcome to my week in review. This is essentially where I just kind of talk about milestones and the sort of things that happened to me, mostly dealing with the things that happened to me in real life. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get right on into it. So, Monday was pretty much regular day. I went ahead, did my Latin class, did my anime class, and then was going, I walked all the way up to my English class, right? I, I sat down, I, you know, got ready right outside of the class because there's a French class that goes before us. And I just went ahead and, you know, started going through some homework assignments and stuff like this. And eventually the time for class rolled around, but it was a little weird because usually there's just this kind of small crowd of people that gathers right outside the door, but today there wasn't. And then I, I walk up to the door and there's just one other person and they're looking in the door and they're like, there's no one else here. Was class canceled? And so I'm like, uh, I don't know, maybe? And so... She, she tries to get it up on her phone, but her Wi-Fi won't work, and so finally I get out my phone and I check, and lo and behold, class was canceled. All of a sudden, I had an entire new hour, an entire hour to do whatever the heck I wanted with my day. So what did I go do? What did I do with this new hour of freedom where I could get started on a million projects or be super productive or even make a YouTube video? Well, I went ahead, I walked all the way back to my room, and I pretty much just passed out. My will to continue at that point was kind of non-existent, and so, like a good college student, I took a good old nap. And then, upon waking from that nap, did I go do something productive, like go to a review session, or do work, or, you know, anything? Nah, no. I, I mean, by that phrasing, I'm sure you guys knew that, but yeah, I just decided to kind of stay and watch YouTube videos until my obligation to water polo was such that it forced me out of bed and over to practice. A practice which, by the way, was extremely difficult for me because my will to do anything at that point was pretty much zero. So when I went ahead and woke up on Tuesday, I was kind of in that same sort of funk. I didn't know what to do, I didn't want to really do anything, and I had a million huge projects that were just kind of lording over me and just taking up all of my mental space, and so I just kind of went around and went about my day, and when I got back, I decided that to help me get motivated to do some work that I had to do by the next day, which is a lab report in this case, I decided to make a video about procrastination. But before I was allowed to make that video, I had to finish the lab report. And so I did. I went ahead, finished the report, or at least got it mostly done, did the video, got got the report completely done and, you know, felt a lot better about myself. The thing was, with even with that report aside, I still had three more assignments to do and they still just kind of would go on to color my week and still kind of color my perspective going forward because it's not fun to have three huge papers that are essentially your finals grade just kind of sitting above your head like we're gonna go ahead and ruin your life if you don't try and start us, so that's kind of been a little bit of a stressful thing, but I'll get through it, hopefully, probably, maybe, I'm hopefully. Wednesday didn't really help. It was my long day, and not only was it my long day, but it was the longest lab that I've ever done, because me and my partner are usually super fast at labs. Everyone else, it might take the full three hours or whatever, but for us, it would take two. Us and this other group of two were very, very speedy, and we would constantly be like almost racing each other, except they don't know we're racing, we just know we're racing. And we would just constantly be going super fast, but this was the first lab where they actually got up and walked out of the room, finished, about an hour before we did, which was just kind of heartbreaking. Um, 
while it did mean that I didn't have to do the swimming portion of the water polo set, it was just also very difficult and very frustrating because the reason we were going slow on the lab was because we didn't really understand any of the directions. Everything was kind of vaguely worded and we just had to constantly keep asking the teacher to come over and explain it to us because it just did not make any sense to either of us. So then I went, got through that, I got to practice, we practiced, we did everything, and went back home. Thursday morning. I'm a little out of the funk at this point because I'm excited that I only have three classes that day. Tuesdays and Thursdays are my pretty much my lighter days. Um, so I went ahead, started going to my classes, and when I got out of my lecture for comparative politics, as, I, as I'm packing up my stuff and getting ready to leave, um, someone comes up to me, oh, Thursday was Halloween. That's right. So I, I decided for Halloween to dress as this kind of sorcerer type thing. Um, I have this really fun shirt with like really like big sleeves or whatever. I don't, I don't know. It, it was kind of a nerdy thing to do. I had like this little pendant that was kind of like sorcery themed. Um, it was fun, but the way I phrase the costume is it's the kind of costume that you can go out in public in and they won't be sure if it's a costume or not, so it's like it's good for both public and for like Halloweeny things because if you explain it, then yes, it's a costume, but if you don't, then it could just be some kind of weird sort of formal wear type thing. So that was fun, but anyway, I'm sitting here getting up packing up my stuff in my sorcery costume or whatever and someone comes up to me and they're like hi are you Rachel um can you go ahead can you like send me my your notes from Tuesday and I'm just over here like I guess we're just got around because if you haven't been watching these every single week first of all shame on you how dare you not watch all of my videos how dare you have a life outside of this uh, but second of all it was I have previously had this happen once there was this one girl a few weeks back maybe one or two or something like that who asked me to give her me give her my notes because she was going to be absent and now, this individual came up, and she had been absent on Tuesday because of um, allergies, like severe allergies, and so I'm like, huh, I guess I did a pretty good job with those notes, because, yeah, more and more people are coming. I should start a business off of this. Uh, but anyways, I just kind of took it in stride, and this time I was a lot more confident than the first time, because the first time I kept protesting, I was like, I don't know if my notes are the greatest, like, I'm not sure if they're even legible, like, I, I, I don't know if they're gonna have everything you need, uh, but this time I was like, yes, I, I'm a good note taker, I can go ahead and do that for you, and when I went ahead and sent it over to her, the first comment she said was like, you were the right person to ask, and so uh, that just kind of, that helped me out a lot. It was kind of funny when I think about it, how much it helped to just have that little bit of positivity sort of thing. So I'm thankful to my teacher for directing these students in need my way because it is just a good feeling to help someone. And sometimes when you're feeling down, that's just the best cure is to just go ahead and help people. And so the rest of that day, I did go around and help people in, in a tiny way. Because for Halloween, everyone had all of these things set up for their charities, right? They were all selling various Halloween treats for charities, and so I went ahead with this $10 bill, and I went to every single booth that there was, and I got something from every single one of them. And even though I know I'm contributing something like, I don't know, 70 cents around there, on average, to each of them, it still was a good feeling, and I was glad that I could at least make it a little bit better that these people were sitting outside and just waiting for people to, like, come and just trying to pretty much almost 
beg people to come and buy their stuff. Though there was, there was one booth that I didn't patronize, and that was because as I was walking up to this one, I got really close, I was probably like a few inches from the table, and I just kind of stood there for a second, and the person was just, you know, on their phone. And as a member of Gen Z or whatever, I don't really care if you're on your phone that much when you're waiting, that's fine. But if someone approaches you, I feel like there's this kind of alarm system that naturally goes off in humans. Where it's like, oh, I should probably pay attention. And this person just didn't seem to have that. They didn't look up for their phone. I was right there. I was right about to be like, okay, uh, can I get this? And just no, they weren't looking at me. They weren't responding in any way. So I just kind of kept walking because... If you're not gonna try, then I'm not gonna buy, and that's just my philosophy. So, <laughs> Friday came about, and Friday I was able to go to a swim meet with my dad. But it wasn't just a swim meet, because if it was, I wouldn't go, because in my opinion, watching swimming is not the most exciting thing in the world, coming from a person that doesn't really enjoy to swim, so yeah. Um, but alongside this swim meet was a diving meet, and that was really, really cool to see. The funny thing about diving meets is these people are doing these beautiful dives with like a million flips and turns and whatnot, and this beautiful entry into the water, and then the judges come up and they're like, that was okay. You did an okay job at that dive. And I'm just over here like, what? I swear, these are dives that if you saw them in a show or anywhere, you would be convinced, unless you're a professional diver or diving judge, that they were like beautifully executed dives, like almost perfect. But these judges were super harsh. The scores were out of 10. We didn't hear anyone get above an 8, and only one person got an 8, and I think like maybe two got up to a 7.5 in the entire day. It was so harsh. There were tons and tons and tons of like fours and fives and threes and like sixes. It was like all right around there. And it was just a very interesting time because it just kind of reminds you that you can do something um, that to people outside of your field looks really, really impressive. But you know in your heart and the people inside of your field know in their hearts and in their minds or whatever that it's just not impressive. But maybe it's a good thing to sometimes step out of that in the mental perspective. Like, instead of just always being in your field, seeing all of your imperfections, just maybe once a week or something like this, go ahead and take a step back and see what what is this in the eyes of someone that's not a professional? What does it look like? How does it look? And you will be amazed at the beauty of your own work and passion. It is absolutely incredible. I was also able to go to a football game, which I'd rather not talk about, on Saturday. And then today, I was able to go to my very first Comic-Con. Um, I've never gone to a convention before, so this was really cool. Um, just seeing everyone in all of the costumes was super cool because, you know, you always hear that there's people in costumes at Comic-Con, but actually being there and being like, amongst anime characters is just, I don't know, it's a really kind of fun experience and cool atmosphere and it's just where everyone around you is a nerd and they all know it and it's just fun. It's just fun to be a nerd among nerds and to be able to be like, oh, is that yada yada? And they're like, yes, of course, that is yada yada. And you're like, yes, someone understands. It, it's just, it's a really fun thing. So probably gonna go to more conventions in the future, but that was just great. So, uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up for the week, and thus, I feel like there might be something I'm forgetting. Ah, that's right. A Heist with Markiplier came out on Wednesday, and I bet all of you know about that thing that happened, because that was absolutely huge. 
Upon recording this video, that video has 237 views. And while that might not seem like much, if you're someone like me who constantly watches huge channels with hundreds of thousands of views, it does mean a freaking ton to me because my videos have been averaging maybe 10 views. So getting 23 or 24 times that, that's insane. And yes, I did know going in that doing a reaction to this would draw people to my channel. And I do want to just say thank you so much for coming. Welcome to the channel. Um, but here's the thing about the heist video. I very much enjoyed making it. I plan on making maybe one or two more about the heist because I have my very favorite ending path and also all of my kind of conspiracy theories that have to do with it. But I don't... It's not going to be a purely Markiplier-based channel. The way I would phrase this is the a lot of things that Markiplier and other big YouTubers that I watch do are things that I've seen and thought would be extremely fun to do. A really good example of this is uh, Markiplier Makes. Those That's a video series that I extremely enjoy and extremely wanted to do with my friends and so I did. And that's why I was out on Saturday is I was editing the very first of those kind of video. And so I want to take those sorts of things that big YouTubers do and I, I just kind of want to do them for myself. And sometimes there will be overlap. I mean, I really loved reacting to Markiplier's creation. That was awesome and a great opportunity. If you guys want, I could go through Date with Markiplier, but I have done that before, so it would probably be a little less of a good reaction. But that's pretty much it. I'm not going to be like going through his videos and like reacting to each and every single one of them. That's not going to be what this channel is. The most Markiplier that you're probably going to see on this channel is either going to be through the heist video or it's going to be videos of similar content like for the Markiplier makes my kind of take on that or things like the try not to laugh videos. I still really want to try though for that I need a good meme supply. So as our closing thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. If you came from the Markiplier Makes insurgence of people, thank you so much for staying. I hope that you actually enjoy these videos and that you understand where I'm going with them and that you'll enjoy that. Um, if you do like this kind of video, go ahead and leave a like, it helps a lot. And go ahead and subscribe if you're even a newer person and you just want to kind of join and see where this channel is going. Feel free. It's kind of a crazy ride, but we'll see what we get. And yes, I do want you guys to go ahead and comment your best funny videos down below. I really want to do a Try Not To Laugh challenge because I've seen a lot of YouTubers do them and frankly they kind of suck. So I really want to try that out for myself and yeah. So anyways, I hope that you guys have a fantastic week going forward, and I hope that you guys soar high and enjoy your ride of life. Bye!